In this week's GarageBand Weekly, we're talking all about some brand new free plugins. I'm going to show you how you to make sure that you're getting the best quality audio in GarageBand iOS. And the resource of the week is something that I use on a daily basis. You're going to have to stick around to find out what that is. But if it is your first time here, who am I? What is this? My name is Pete, and this is Studio Live Today, where I share tips and tricks and tutorials and live streams just like this one, all about home and mobile recording. And GarageBand happens to be one of my favorite platforms for recording music. It is free, it is accessible, it is on your Mac, your iPad, and your iPhone. So it's something that pretty much everyone can get their hands on and get started with. And over the last five or so years, I've been learning and been sharing my learnings as I've been going on. So if you do want to learn how to use GarageBand, head on over to studiolivetoday.com, search all the videos there. We've got a heap of tutorials to get you up and running. Thank you to the folks who are here live. If you've got any questions about GarageBand, throw those in the chat and we'll circle back around to that towards the end of the show. Just put question in front of it so I know that it's a question and I'll cover it in the show. If you're watching on the replay, don't worry, we love you just as much. Just leave your comments down in the comments section if you have any questions or if you have anything you want to talk about in future weeks. Let's jump in. What is in the news this week? No, there is no GarageBand update. In the pre-show, someone was asking, when's the next update for GarageBand? I wish I knew. There hasn't been a GarageBand update of significance for some time. We've had some new sounds in the iOS version over the last sort of six months, a couple of new sound packs, and the Mac version has got bug fixes. Yeah, nothing exciting, nothing new. So hopefully we are going to get something new soon. What we do have that's new is a new version of iOS and iPad OS. So we're up to, believe it or not, feels like just yesterday that we went to iOS 13. We're up to iOS 13.3.1. So you might have seen an update. You might be thinking, do I, can I update? Uh, I've updated on a couple of my devices. GarageBand working fine. So if you're an iOS user and you're thinking, should I update? Then I think you'll be okay. Now, there is never any guarantee. Here's the thing, GarageBand will update and it, sorry, GarageBand is fine with the update, but basically every time a change is made, if you're using external third-party apps, audio unit plugins, anything like that, things can happen. And it's the same in the Mac world as well. So when, uh, is it Catalina, the new Mac version that came out of my buddy Patrick over at the GarageBand Guide, cautioned folks to wait to update because there were some plugins, there were some things that were not working. And we all know, I think I spoke about it last week, that Line 6, like the Sonic port and the Line 6 audio interfaces are still not working properly in iOS 13. So I know Line 6 users are fairly unhappy and hoping that either Line 6 or the new iOS updates will actually make their devices more than just fancy paperweights with buttons and dials. So hopefully, uh, yeah, we, we can get on top of that. But it looks like updating is going to be a good thing to do. Next up in the news, we do have some new things. And thank you to a bunch of people who have let me know about these. We've got some brand new free audio unit plugins. And every time there's some free plugins, I get pretty excited. And there are some videos in the works, as you'd no doubt expect. But uh, if you're watching on the video here, these are the ones you can't really see, but they're all those N. This is from a company called Nembrini Audio, who I don't know much about, but I like saying Nembrini because that's about as, as long as I can roll my R sounds. Uh, but they've got five free plugins and one paid plugin. So the free plugins are Crunk version 2, uh, a chorus, a cleaner, a delay, and a noise gate. And there is also a reverb so you look out for those those ends that you have there uh, so yeah sharing the love with some free plugins and we'll be talking about one of those as our plugin of the week so there you go a little tease for that one let's jump in to my rant of the week and this one is garage band adjacent and i spoke about this on my live show yesterday i do a q a show called home studio q a it's a podcast and a live show i do every week on a sunday morning or a saturday evening for some folks and i spoke about being selfish and and a lot of folks uh, a lot of folks gave me some feedback and, and some commented on this so i wanted to cover it again here because it's very much related to garage band especially for the mobile version of garage band because I wanted to talk time management and how do you find the time to create music. And the beautiful thing about having GarageBand is there's a few things. In fact, it is 100% free. It is on your laptop or your mobile or your iPad. So you can pretty much create music when and where you like. And this is super important because the days gone by, and even for some people now, 
their studio setup is the only place they can record and create music. Sure, you might be able to take your voice memos app with you, but you do have to come back to your desktop computer with your audio interface and all your gears and your patch cables and your racks of racks of gear. And that's the place that you can actually come to record. The cool thing that we have these days and the reason that I can get so much done is that when I'm out for a walk, I have my phone with me. So you know, I don't I don't recommend you know walking and mixing because you're going to fall into a pit and that's never going to be fun. But I do recommend listening to your mixes as you're walking along, like take a pause, maybe do some mixing. Oh yeah, that 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 kick drum is actually sounding too too heavy on that. Turn it down. You go along, you're doing your thing. Same thing, you can learn about other things, you can listen to YouTube videos, you can do a lot of things. But creating music on the go is what I'm talking about here. So uh, every every bit of time that I get, like this, it is important to carve out time. As I talked about yesterday, communicate with your friends and family, find time where you go, here's two hours that I'm just going to create music. But the beautiful part is with GarageBand, even when you have those five and 10 minute wacky windows of time, you can use those to create. So when I'm picking up my kids from school, I get to the school on five minutes early. You better believe that I'm not talking to the other parents because I'm antisocial person apparently. Um, but I'm I'm on my phone and I'm working on a track. So that is what's cool. Find those little windows of time if you are if you work full time, if you've got family commitments, if you've got other commitments, utilize those windows of time that you have. You'll be amazed at how much you can get done in those little five and ten minute windows on the bus. Uh, like my buddy Marcus uh, De Fingers, he does all of his composing on the train, going to and from work. He works in Washington DC. He's got a long train ride. He creates there. I create while I'm walking around. You might create when you're on the toilet. I'm not going to judge. Do, do your thing. You do you. But make sure that you are creating. That's the main thing. So that is what I wanted to just touch on here quickly is that, again, I'm, I'm selling, what is it? Uh, no, I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to the converted, ice to the Eskimos, all those old cliched sayings. I know. But uh, yeah, it, it's something to keep in mind. Let's move right along. We'll say good day to the folks that we have here live on the show. Hello, we've got Michael Turner is here. We've got Spy Ninja's family. Sion Fine is here. Jade Star, Alex Buckers, Imagine Six. Hello to you. Uh, clearly epic Benedict Stewart music. Sean for sound. Jan Van der Bosch, uh, Douglas Riley. Uh, I think I've said everyone. Barry Smith is here. Darren Mitchell is here. Colossalizer. Hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for being here live. And if you want to join the fun, we do this every, it is Monday morning for me. It is Sunday afternoon in the US, Sunday evening in UK and Europe. Check the channel, go to studiolivetoday.com to find out exactly what's going on. Let's see if we've got any questions here. We have one here from Sion. I'm looking for a Bluetooth wireless headphone that I can use for mixing trying to minimize my use of wires. Yeah, and then it goes on to say, I, I would like to be as small as possible, although it seems I may get AirPods or something else. I can, uh, I do use Android and Windows devices. Yep, so here's the thing. I don't use Bluetooth devices basically at all. I do have a pair of JBL. I use JBL for all my earbuds. I use the Endurance Run for my wired earbuds, and I've got some, I think they're called the 110T or the T110, just some cheap Bluetooth earbuds. <clears throat> the the thing is that for mixing, um, it, it's not a bad thing. Like I've mixed on earbuds, don't get me wrong. If it's what you've got, use it. Uh, I don't know that it's worthwhile getting like the big over-the-ear kind of Bluetooth headphones. I don't think they even make any that are like studio monitors. Most of those that I've seen, they kind of hype up the bass too much and I don't like the sound that you get from that. So I think if you're on the go and you want to remove the wires, yeah, AirPods. I know people that have been you know, listening to music and, and mixing on AirPods. But again, you're not going to get that reference that you would get from, say, a pair of monitor headphones like these, these Sennheiser HD280s. And you do have to deal with latency. Now, latency when you're mixing is not a huge deal, but it is still a little bit annoying and frustrating when you hit the play button and it doesn't play immediately and your screen doesn't line up with what you actually got there. So that is uh, that, that is my opinion on there. Um, imagine six. Should I get logic? Um, if you here's my thing. I'm going to rant about this. I, I think it was a previous rant, week's rant. If you have been using GarageBand and your music has reached the level where GarageBand is no longer doing what you need it to do, so you're frustrated with the fact that you can't do certain things, that is the time to up date. Uh, I think too many people update and upgrade their software before they're ready to, before they've actually mastered the previous bit of software, because what th the thought is that I'm going to be better. If I use a better piece of software, surely if I'm paying $300 for a piece of software, instead of using something free, my music must instantly get $300 worth of good. Well, 
Unfortunately, no, it doesn't work that way. In fact, I've seen it work the other way where people upgrade their software and because they're not ready, they don't know how to use it, they can't get the best out of it, it actually makes their music go downhill. So upgrade by all means, use different software, but do it for the right reason. Another question here about upgrading from Barry Smith. I have the UR12 interface. Should I upgrade and get the UR22C, which is what I'm using now? The I'm going to give you the same answer, basically, Barry, as I just gave uh, the last question, which is, what are you missing? So what, what isn't the UR12 doing? So in terms of audio quality, which is a good segue because we're about to talk about audio quality, in terms of audio quality, both of them deliver 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz sound that GarageBand is going to use if you're on iOS. And I think both of them also do uh, up to 192 kilohertz if you want to, like if you want to record that on your PC or your Mac. The only, so the, the main difference are if you're recording stereo tracks, the UI22 has two channels. We're talking audio interfaces here, by the way. The Steinberg UI22C is a two-channel audio interface, meaning you can connect in two microphones or a mic and a guitar, two guitars, two line inputs, and it has balanced out Output. So if you've got decent monitor speakers, the UR12 only has unbalanced RCA output, so you're not going to get the best sound, and the UR22C has balanced, plus it has MIDI input. So if you are going to, uh, yeah, if you're going to use MIDI and you have MIDI keyboards, you can do that. Um, <laughs> so uh, Jade says, uh, I had my mic drop opinion on the Logic versus GarageBand question in GBU this week. Yeah, I think, I think a similar question came up, and I think you and others gave a similar sort of answer. Uh, uh, answer one more question here because I'm conscious of time. Uh, Alex ba Backus says, hi, Pete. Have you answered this query before? Uh, you may have, but is there a time counter minute second possibility in GB iOS? <sighs> no, there isn't. And it is a pain because it seems like it would be the absolute simplest ad. Like, I am not a software developer. So please, someone tell me if this is completely out of the realms of possibility. But as you may know, when we're using GarageBand here on iOS, at the very top here, we have a little ruler, and that is our bars and beats, which is fine. That's, most DAWs have that. But most also have your time at that same. Now, I know we're, we're real estate, screen size, all of that sort of thing, but just give us the option to switch it, right? Like just, it should be something here in the settings. You should be able to go in here into settings, go to display and say display as beats and bars or as minutes and seconds. It doesn't exist. It's a pain in the butt. It's probably a topic for a future rant, which I'll go into more detail on uh, in the future. But yeah, it would be great if that was the case. It is not. So my apologies. I hope that that is an option and a feature that is added in the near future. Uh, righty, I've, I've probably missed other questions. I will try and get back, but I'm very conscious of time. If you do have questions that we don't get to here on the show, don't worry, don't stress. There's a couple of places that you can go, and I'm going to talk about those at the end of the show. Or, of course, you can always leave your comments down in the description, not the description, in the comment section. And myself and the rest of the wonderful Studio Live Today community are always down there answering your questions and helping you out. Let's get on to tip of the week. I've got a double double header tip here for you. Talking of audio quality, so we just talked about the Steinberg UR12 or UR22. That if you have a 24-bit audio interface, there's one thing that you really want to do. In fact, you really want to do this regardless of what interface you have. And that is make sure that your audio is set at the best quality it can be. Now, when I say the best, if you're on a Mac, um, the recording, the sampling rate, 44.1 kilohertz. If you're recording in Logic and if you're recording in other software, you can actually increase that. So you can record at 48 or 96 or 192. I don't really think that that's worthwhile, but your mileage is going to vary. You're going to end up with very large files if you're recording at 192 kilohertz sampling rate. What is sampling rate, though? Sampling rate is how many samples per second are taken of your audio. So 44.1 means 44,100 samples are taken of your audio. So that's what you want to set it at. And the good news is in GarageBand, you got no choice because it's set at 44.1 on iPhone and iPad. But there is one thing you can change. So about four years ago or three years ago when GarageBand was updated to version 2.1, what was 2.2, sorry, <laughs> what was added is the ability to actually add, add, change your audio to 24-bit audio. I'm going to show you how to do that here now. So here's my iPhone. Up in the top right corner, I'm going to tap on the settings icon there, and then I'm going to scroll down. You can play along at home, make sure that you are also getting the best quality. Hit the advanced button there, and here we've got a bunch of different settings. You've got multi-track recording, uh, you've got running background, you've got use music apps, you've got a few other things. 
but you have this one here, 24-bit audio resolution. If that is unselected, if you don't have 24-bit audio resolution, turn it on because you might as well. It's going to give you full 24-bit quality if you connect up an, a USB audio interface. So if you're using something like a Focusrite Scarlett, a, a Steinberg UR series, some of the Behringer HD series, uh, then you're going to have 24-bit audio. If you're using some things like the Samsung mixer I used to use is only 16-bit. The Behringer UM2, the Euphoria UM2, which is a very popular budget entry-level interface, is only 16-bit. Now, even if you've got a 16-bit interface, put your device in 24-bit because you might as well. It's going to just mean that if you bring in other samples, other sounds, other loops, if they are 24-bit, then that's going to be the same because it's not only the recording sampling rate you're getting, it's then when you're mixing it out what the sample rate is and you want to keep it at 24-bit as long as possible. So even if you don't have an audio interface and you're just using loops and samples and, and your own virtual instruments, make sure that that is set to 24-bit. And then when you export, you'll notice that it says 44.1 24-bit. That is the tip for today to get the best quality recording out of GarageBand on your iPhone or your iPad. Let's move right along to our plugin of the week. And our plugin of the week this week is the Crunk Virtual Amp Sim. It is probably the best free AUV3 Amp Sim plugin I've ever come across. You might have heard me talk about Stark before, which is the Clevgrand Amp Sim plugin. It's uh, very, very cool, but it's iPad only. So, and it, it's AUV3, which means that you can put it on a track. I'll, I'll quickly just explain that. If you're new to GarageBand, I'll, I'll quickly explain. So when you load up GarageBand and you've got tracks here in GarageBand, like I do here, then if you've got another app installed on your phone that you want to use as a plugin and it's AUV3 audio unit compatible, you can actually bring it here directly into your uh, track. So if I've got, say, this guitar track, or, or just solo this guitar track, we go into the settings here, the plugins and EQ. And if you want to get a better version of this, uh, yeah, search Pete John's plugins or Pete John's effects on YouTube and you'll find all of this. And here it is. This is the amp sim look at that doesn't that look nice it's the crunk v2 amp sim here so i'm not going to do a full demo of this but uh i think i put it on this track let's just hit play Uh, you're not going to be able to hear that very well at all. It didn't do that justice whatsoever, trust me. Uh, plug, <laughs> plug it in, put it on your tracks, and start playing around with that. It's free, so you can't beat the price. It's got some good uh, presets down here that you can play around with. And here's the great thing. You might have noticed there, I'm using it on a virtual amp track. That's the great thing about AUV3 is it doesn't have to be on an amp sim. doesn't need to be a real guitar. It doesn't even need to be a guitar. You could put this. I could throw this on this piano track. And I could have distortion on my piano or any sort of amp sim on my piano. So it's definitely worth checking out, experimenting with, and it's free. And what I say with free apps is download them, even if you don't think you're going to use them, go and get them as soon as possible because developers sometimes will put their apps out just to sort of test and get them working and, and sort of tweak them. And then suddenly you go back and they're like $3.99 or $2.99 to buy. So if you want to get a free uh, app, go and check out the Crunk. And you've noticed on there, I mentioned at the start, but the other four that we have there, uh, I would also recommend. So if you actually search, I'll, I'll throw them in the description of this video. But if you search for Nembrini in the App Store, N-E-M-B-R-I-N-I. -I. And I don't know anything about this particular developer, but uh, they seem to be making some cool apps and most of them are free. There is also a Reverb plugin. I think I mentioned that before, which is $4.99 US. So if you like all these apps and you want to support the developer, which I always recommend, then you can pick up the, uh, the app as well. For $4.99, the Reverb app, and then you'll have Reverb, Delay, a cleaner. I'm, I'm really hanging out to, to check out this cleaner. Uh, I use Bruce Free from Clevgrand as my audio sort of cleaning tool, noise reduction. But the cleaner here has some uh, interesting sounding presets. It's got, I looked at it before. Uh, I can't find the presets now, but it had, uh, oh, there we go factory presets. So it's got Cut Rumble, it's got Hiss Remover, it's got Mud Cleaner, and Remove Harsh. So they all sound like they're. Uh, yeah, that pretty self-explanatory, straightforward. So I will be testing those out. And of course, you know that if you hang around, if you subscribe to Studio Live today, I will be checking all of these out over the coming days and weeks. So watch out for a full review of the Nimbrini apps to come. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'll uh, just see if we've got any other questions that I can answer. Um, do, 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 do. 
We, I don't think we have any other garage band questions here, so we are going to uh, circle back around to the last topic of today. And that is my GarageBand resource of the week. In previous weeks, we've talked about some great YouTube channels. My buddy Patrick over at the GarageBand Guide. We've got Dan Baker. We've got Lewin Barringer, GarageBand and Beyond. Dean Davis, a songwriting studio. People that I'm probably missing that are going to be really, really sad and, and not liking me now. So there's a lot of great GarageBand content that is out there that folks are producing. Um, and there's a lot of great resources as well. So I've mentioned this group, the GarageBand Users Group on Facebook. So if you do, if you're a Facebook user and you want to check that out, go and do that. But if you're not on Facebook and you still want to have a chat, there are a few places to do it. Obviously, down in the comments of the of Studio Live today of my videos, that's one place where you can actually have a chat and talk to other GarageBand users all the time. The other place that I really like is Reddit. There's a great subreddit for GarageBand over on Reddit. Many of you probably frequent there. Great sharing of music, people asking questions, sharing resources, sharing tips and tricks. And I get a lot of my information and ideas from both the GarageBand group, but also the Reddit, the subreddit on GarageBand over there at Reddit. But my question for you is, what other resources do you have? Because, uh, yeah, what are we, episode seven? I'm sure I'm going to run out of resources to talk about fairly soon. I'm going to just have to start saying my own channel because I won't have anything else that I can actually say. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and we got through quite a bit here today. Check out those free plugins. They look really, really cool. There's some notes down in the description if you want to learn more. If you want to find ways to support me, you can head over to patreon.com slash Pete Johns if you want to support me on Patreon. And you can, of course, go to studiolivetoday.com where you can join the mailing list. You can use my gear guide to find the best gear for your home and mobile studio and of course if you have any other questions or you want to just say hello pete at studiolivetoday.com thanks for joining me today folks and i'll see you next time